As we design the sounds of a game in Wise, we obviously need to play them as we work. In most cases, we simply use the transport for this, but we must first select the object we want to play. The added step of selecting an object can sometimes be cumbersome when we want to quickly play a lot of related sounds in order to hear how they correlate with each other. For example, in the Cube Demo game, as the player moves through the world, there are a lot of sounds of various types that are likely to be heard simultaneously. To make it easier to play these sounds and essentially simulate the player exploring the world, it's possible to lay out multiple transports, each for a different sound, into a single view. This is accomplished in WISE using a feature called Soundcaster. Soundcaster is a type of view that's commonly used in cooperation with the mixing desk view. These two views can be seen together in the mixer layout. So go to the main menu and choose Layouts, Mixer. We see the Soundcaster view in the lower part of the screen. The first step is to create a preset that you'll use to house the objects you want to be able to play. This preset is known as a Soundcaster session, and you create it by clicking the selector button in the upper left of the Soundcaster view and choose New. We'll name this Soundcaster session Player. We now have an active Soundcaster session, but it currently doesn't contain any playable objects. Adding objects to a Soundcaster session is done by simply dragging them into the Soundcaster view. In this game, all of the magic sounds are triggered with numerous events that begin with the word fire. In the event viewer, select the first fire event, hold shift, and then select the last fire event. And now we'll just drag them into the Soundcaster session. As we do, we see that the area is divided into a grid, and we simply let go where we want the first object to be positioned on this grid. We can also add the foot player event in order to simulate the player moving during gameplay. Now we can see that each object is represented with a small version of the transport control. One of the main advantages of Soundcaster is that we have a way we can quickly play the various objects in effect simulating gameplay. Because sounds are allowed to overlap, we can feel out how the sounds might blend together during gameplay. Also, at the top of the Soundcaster view, we can see an area that displays various game syncs such as switches. This provides a fast way to see how sounds might change in reaction to other variables, assuming we've configured them to do so. In this case, we can hear what happens if we change the material the player is walking on to gravel. Watch the tutorial on working with switches to learn how this is accomplished. There's also a Reset All button to bring all of our game syncs back to their default values. Also in the top area, there's a Stop button. This is useful when you have a sound like this fire gem that continues to play until it is stopped. Just click the Stop button and any objects will then stop playback. We can create as many Soundcaster sessions as we like, customizing each one with the specific items we need quick access to. For example, the Fire Fire Gym Player event triggers multiple sounds. We can create a Soundcaster session just for the Fire Gym related sounds. First, go to the selector menu and choose New. And we'll call this session Fire Gym. Then we can go ahead and add the Fire Gym Player event. But then we'll go to the Project Explorer and then expand the Fire Gym Magic Actor Mixer and select all of the Fire Gym related objects and we'll add them as well. Once in the Soundcaster view, we can arrange the transports to our liking. Now, if we play the Fire Gym Player event, we can hear the sequence of events. but we can also play the individual objects. Notice that we can also see properties such as pitch, volume, and low pass filter. These can be directly modified within Soundcaster. In this case, it sounds like the Fire Gym flight sound is a little too loud, so we'll go ahead and directly turn down its volume property.
Now, if we play the Fire Gem player event, that sounds a little better. To hear the Fire Gem sounds in context with all of the other player sounds, we just go back to the selector menu and we can choose Player. We can now hear how the change fits when played along with all of the other sounds.